Hello everyone and welcome back. In one of my last videos, I talked about why you should get your AMP or Airframe and Power Plant certification if you are working in aviation. Well, in this video, I'm gonna give you the two paths or the two avenues on how you can get your AMP. So stick around. Okay, you are interested in aviation as a career or maybe you're already working in aviation, but you wanna go ahead and get your Airframe and Power Plant certification so that you can work on airplanes and sign off your own work. So the first distinction here is an AMP is not a license. Neither is a pilot's license. We call them a license. We call it a private pilot license, but it's actually a private pilot certificate, just like it's also an airframe and power plant certificate. And it awards you the privilege to work on aircraft and sign off your own work. So the first way you get your AMP, Go to work for a general aviation maintenance facility for at least three years. In those three years, you need to track either through a logbook, and I don't mean logbook entries for the aircraft, I mean a personal logbook, like a, a pilot keeps a logbook of all of his flight time. You need to keep a personal logbook of all of the tasks that you perform when you perform them. For example, change a tire, service to landing gear, perform an oil change, cleaned a windshield, uh, treated corrosion, and you keep this logbook for three years. After a three-year period, you can contact your local FSDO, FISDO, Flight Standards District Office. Depending on what area you're in, you're going to have a different one. I'm in San Antonio. I have a FISDO here in San Antonio, but you may have, I'm just gonna use Texas because I know Texas. You may have Midland, Houston, or Dallas. Those are two, those are three other FISDOs in uh, San Antonio. So if you're in Arlington, you're going to be Dallas. If you're in Italy, Texas, you're going to be Dallas. If you're in Austin, Texas, you're going to be San Antonio. You see where I'm going. There is no FISDO in Austin. Okay. You will call your FISDO and you will ask to speak with an airworthiness inspector. Airworthiness inspectors are the FAA designees who go around to the airports spot checking airplanes, ramp checking airplanes, and making th sure things are airworthy, okay? Or they come in and they inspect maintenance facilities, whatever it may be. And you will tell them, hi, I've been working at, you know, Bryce Aviation for three years. Um, I'd like to apply for an AMP. They're gonna tell you to fill out an 8610-2 and to come see them with a record of all of the work that you're done. At which point that inspector is going to look through all of your records and say, okay, I'm gonna sign you off to take your general test and your airframe test. Okay, I'll do a whole nother video on the tests next week, but he'll sign you off to take those tests. He may look at your power plant and say, well, you've got lots of experience in reciprocating engines or piston engines, but you don't have any turbine engine experience. So he may not give you, depending on the FISDO, they may, he may not give you credit for that and then you have to take a power plant course somewhere else. So after three years, you fill out all that paperwork, you're approved to go t test, you self-study for the test, all the written questions, I should, I'm lying to you, most of the written questions are published for your generals, for your airframes, and for your power plants. Okay? And then you study for your writtens, or not your writtens, your orals and practicals, which is sitting in front of a DME, or a designated mechanic examiner, and he will give you an oral test and then a practical test where you actually do projects. So what is option number two? Option number two is a little faster and the route that a lot more people choose, and that is to go to an approved Part 147 school. FAR Part 147 covers aviation maintenance technician schools. Now, I'm biased. I happen to teach and work full time at a Part 147 school, which will. Uh, I happen to teach and work at a Part 147 school, which will remain nameless. Not because I don't want to tout my school where I work, but because I'm not a represent representative of the school that I teach at. Uh, my views expressed here are not views of the school that I teach at. So just for liability and everything else, I won't say here where I teach, but I teach at a 147 school. In a 147 school, there are typically 16 to 19 month programs, depending on which one you go to. Here in Texas, I can name five pretty quickly. There's Hallmark University in San Antonio, St. Phillips University, or it's St. Phillips Community College in San Antonio. They have an aircraft program. There's Del Mar in Corpus Christi, Tarrant County in Dallas, and T 
TSTC up in Waco. All approved 147 schools, they all kind of do the same thing, just have different avenues of how they teach their curriculum or what their programs look like. But they're all typically 16 to 19 months. It's actually 18 to 19 months. I think I said 16 the first time, but uh, it's 18 to 19 months depending on where you go, okay? You will go to class in blocks, four hours in the morning, you'll have a lunch, four hours in the afternoon. And after going through all your general subjects, then you take all your airframe subjects, you can test based on that certification of completion of a 147 school to get an airframe license. Then you go to all your power plant classes, you take all of your power plant classes. Once you're done with power plant, you can take your test to get a power plant certification. Now, you don't ever actually have to take the test. That's something we experience at the school that I teach at. We have had plenty of people come through the whole program they get to the end for whatever reason, they don't take the test and, and that's okay. It, it could be because uh, you're nervous. It could be because you're not confident. Um, it could just be because you didn't actually want to get your AMP. You wanted to learn about cars. Maybe, maybe you didn't need it because you worked at a repair station. But I say if you're going to spend 19 months and thousands of dollars at a, at a 147 school, take the test, right? But you go through all the all the program, you can take all the tests at the end, or you can break it up and you can take the airframe in the middle. But you have to complete all of your general courses and all of your airframe courses to take an airframe test. You have to complete all of your general courses and all of your power plant courses to take a power plant test. Once you have one certification, if you have your airframe or if you have your power plant, when you go test for the other one, you don't have to retest for general. You already did general attached to your first certificate. So after that, then you just test for your power plant written and your power plant oral and practical, or if it's your airframe, your airframe written and your airframe oral and practical. Some 147 schools do also do night classes, but night classes typically take longer. They typically take three years because they teach one class a day at night, so five days a week or four days a week, they'll teach one class a day at night and they'll go through the whole program and because they're only doing one class a day and not two, it ends up taking three years instead of the 19 months. Depending on where you go, some schools, they don't have breaks. Other schools, like if you uh, if you go to St. Phillips or TSTC, I think even Tarrant County, they have breaks at the end of the semesters. So you'll, you'll go through your fall semester, you'll have a little Christmas break, you'll go through your spring semester, you'll have a little break before your summer semester, you do do uh, an eight week summer semester, then you got another little break and then you go into your fall semester and you graduate. Uh, most your 147 schools, you can start in the fall or in the spring. So I hope this was all helpful. If you're wanting to get an airframe and power plant certification, I'm not biased, but personally I feel that going to a school is the better option. A lot of people choose, or some people do choose to go work in a general aviation facility because you're going to make money. You're going to be at a job, making money, earning an income, and it's easier when you're earning an income to, I don't know, live, and then when you're ready, you go take the test. But the downside is it's all self-study. You have to figure out what to study and how to study it. At a 147 school, you have to work nights or you work days and you take night classes, but your instructors, your teachers know the test, they know what it looks like, they're gonna give you the information, what to study, where to find the written questions, where to find the oral and practical questions, what standards they teach on, and you may find that the test is actually easier, easier after having gone through a 147 school because a 147 school is going to expose you to reciprocating engines, turbine engines, pressurization systems, blue water servicing, ground operations, it's gonna show you everything. If you just go to a general aviation maintenance facility, if you never work on a turbine engine, you'll never get turbine engine experience, which is why I said that your, your airworthiness representative may not give you credit for that. He may just give you credit for airframe in general, and then you'll still have to do a 147 program or some sort of training to get a power plant. But anyways, I hope this was helpful. If you found it helpful, hit the like button. Leave us a comment if there's something else you want to see. I've gotten a couple requests for different videos, and I'm going to try to film those uh, in the coming weeks because they're, they're pretty good topics. But if you found it interesting, leave us a like, leave us a comment, subscribe, and as always, be easy.